Uh, my name's Colin, I work in the Computational Science Lab at Microsoft Research Cambridge in the UK. Uh, so we're working on ideas of programming biology, that we want to be able to uh, understand what existing systems do, but also uh, exert a kind of engineering control over building new systems and construct interesting applications. So what you're seeing in this video is a double-stranded DNA, and what we've done is we've notched off two sections shown here in red and green of binding sites that the other strands, the inputs to the system, can dock onto and displace sections of DNA. This allows us to form a kind of simple AND uh, gate where this is a building block for us to build up much larger systems. As you can see, then, once the two inputs have been received, it will displace the inhibition on a fluorescent protein and you'll be able to look down a microscope and see it illuminated. This is the DSD tool, and what we have here is a programming languages for molecular systems. And this section here is the correspondence to the uh, visual aspect you're seeing. It's a, you specify the binding sites, how they interact, and once we have this textual description of such a uh, molecular system, we can build much more interesting uh, systems. And we also have the ability to explore the kind of state space of possible interactions, how this uh, system can evolve through time, and this allows us to apply powerful analysis, analysis mechanisms to ensure the system doesn't transition through bad states or, or, or cause issues that are not intended. The, one of the other aspects to this, we can also do uh, in silicon experiments. So on the computer we can uh, see how the system might respond to changing fuel conditions. So initially we've shown um, a, plate, uh, a situation where one of these species, one of the inputs, is insufficient to completely uh, use up the other side. So I can fully uh, supply the reaction. In this case we get a, a complete output as we expect. This work was then taken on uh, using a much larger situation to implement an approximate, a distributed approximate majority uh, algorithm. This work was done by researchers in the lab and then uh, constructed in DNA with uh, collaborators at the University of Washington in the United States. This work was then published in the Nature Nanotech paper. Now the reason why uh, DNA is a, an effective substrate to do this is it's also very convenient for interacting with cellular machinery. So if we can build this logic and we can fit it into how existing cells are behaving, this allows us to influence it or correct uh, what are seen as faults. Now, if we're going to do that effectively, we first need to understand how such cells are making decisions, how they're behaving, what their inputs, and what their internal, in a sense, program is. One way of doing this is to see uh, genes as an interacting network. And we use our tool uh, called RAIN, a reasoning engine for interaction network, to analyze stem cell behavior. In a collaboration with the Austin Smith Lab at the Stem Cell Institute in Cambridge, we carry out experiments where we get uh, individual uh, reports on how genes are acting at time points and then we need to form that into a kind of a network that can be uh, analyzed. So this network is the stem cell in, in some senses, its behavior, its program. This is uh, showing in the solid lines definite interactions, so things that from the literature, from ex uh, prior experimental work we're very confident do exist. The dotted lines are cases where there are possible interactions. As you can see, there's quite a lot of possibilities how this system might be working, and we need to figure out how that might in practice work. Now, just doing all the experiments by hand would be impractical, it would take too long, it would also be extremely costly. Even running individual traditional uh, computer simulations, it would also be very expensive and time consuming. Using a piece of uh, research at the Microsoft lab in uh, Redmond in the US called Z3, it's, which is an SMT solver, this allows the full state space to be much more efficiently uh, explored and pruned. What we've done in the lab here is we've created uh, a Z3 for biology. It's a, uh, a series of research or theories that can be used as general purpose in various different tools. Our first such tool is the uh, application to stem cells. What we've done here, and we've, we're running the computation on the uh, Azure cloud, is we've specified both the model here, as you, as you can see, and with possible interactions, and then we've got on to enter the observations into the system, 
and we can then use this and form a full analysis. And what the system has done is come up with two possible solutions to this problem. In this case, there's, there's one network, and this is a much reduced uh, series of interactions. There are other solutions as well that come up with other possible solutions to the uh, behavior. And what we mean by a solution is that it reproduces all the experimental conditions, and it only uses the possible uh, interactions, but it uses much fewer of them. This then becomes something that's uh, tractable to carry out experiments to understand which one is happening in practice, or indeed if many are. This is also a, uh, another uh, innovation of this work, that rather than simultaneous possible results, we form the full possible set of results that can be done. And this allows us to say definitively whether uh, certain states may be passed through. These results are then leading to further experiments and refinements of this tool. The combination of this uh, molecular scale computing and insight into existing cells' behavior is working together to allow us better innovations in biosensing and medical, potential future medical treatment. And these are all underpinned by convenient languages that we're making accessible uh, over the web and running on the Azure Compute Fabric.